Hello. For this first uh, video in this video series, we're going to be going over a few things about R and R Studio. So we'll be answering the question of what is R and what resources there are to learn about it. Um, we're going to go over how to install R and how to install R Studio, my preferred way of uh, developing an R. And I'll go over an R Studio tour so you can get to know what that IDE is all about and how you can really use it to your benefit. And lastly, we'll close off just showing some other helpful online resources. So to start off, what is R? One of the main places that you're going to go to figure out what R is, is you just go to Google, and you type in the R project, and you'll find a link like this. What is R? And it, it'll go through tons of different things you can learn about it. Um, but the main things that you need to learn about R is that it's free software. And it, we know this is appealing because when it's free, it means it's a low cost tool for data analysis or other statistical processing. And it's a language that can be used for um, both of those things very effectively. Um, it's also a, a functional programming language. It's not an object oriented language, although there are packages that you can use to demonstrate and to use R in an object-oriented way, but that is not the native way that this language is written. Um, basically, this, this language leverages graphical displays to better understand the data that we're looking at, and that's primarily the way that we're going to be using R um, throughout this video series. And it has the capability to do descriptive and predictive analytics, which is really powerful. Um, it's an environment, meaning the development of the language is planned with a purpose, and it's 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 not randomly put together, um, but it's very planned, and it has a purpose. And finally, it's extensible, meaning although originally it was created as a purely statistical system, um, packages have have been created to extend its capabilities to do much more than that. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at. Um, what we can do to install R. So I'm just going to be here in Google. I'm going to type in install R. And so depending on what operating system you're using, you might type in install R Mac or install R Windows. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go ahead and type in install R for Mac. So if we go here, we open this up, and we see all of these options, and there's a, there's a lot of things to choose from. But you need to choose this right here, uh, r3.3.2.package. So when you click that, it's going to download the file. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel this since I already have it on my machine. But you, you'll go ahead and download it and go through the installation process, and you really shouldn't run into many issues with that. And if not, just contact me and I'll, I'll help you out. Installing R Studio. Oh, let me get that back up here. Installing R Studio is is relatively the same. It's this is the the well thought out IDE for programming in R with lots of features to get you going quickly. Now it's important to note that R can be done in the console, um, but that is not the preferred way for me. I know plenty of people who are experts in R who prefer the console and they are a lot quicker than in the IDE. So let's go ahead and, and say install R Studio Mac. So here it comes, R Studio, download R Studio. You can probably choose either one of these. I'm going to click download R Studio. It looks like the quickest way to what I want. And right here, you go through and look uh, just again, depending on the operating system. I have a Mac, so I would click this one. But since I already have R Studio, I'm not going to go through that. But it's, again, just go through the installation process. And it's important to note that you need to install R before you install R Studio. So if you're going here and you have not installed R yet, you're going to have to go back and do that before you install R Studio. So let's go ahead and pull up R Studio to see what's in this program. So as you can see here, I, I have a, a project up and running right now, but for the sake of simplicity, let's go ahead and 
start a new project. You can name it whatever you'd like. All right, so what we see here is basically four different panels. Well, there's, there's three right now, but if we had an R script, here we go, four different panels. And I'll go through and explain what each one of these things are. So at the top left, you see that it's a, it's a script, it's a file. And this is where you can save code that you wanna, you wanna run repeatedly if the data changes or um, you're just trying to figure things out. So this is where I use most of my time. I'm up here with, the, with this type of project using a script. Now down at the bottom left, this is where the console is. And there's a lot of different things that you can do, including, if you see this here, there's demo. So if you type in demo, it'll walk you through some things that you can do in R to get you started quickly. And I'll show you all these resources down here in the bottom right in this helper pane, uh, I guess this would be helper pane number one, and this would be helper pane number two. Um, this just has tons of things. So this helper pane right here, as you can see, it contains a directory of all the files in your project. So if I were to go here and let's go ahead and save. You'll see that at this bottom right hand pane, test.r popped up. And that's the type of file that we're working with, .r. It's not the only type of file you can create in RStudio. That's the R script that's the most used, most common. There are all these different things that you can use that we won't be going over in this presentation. But, like I said, it, this is an extensible language and so it's built out to do a lot of different types of things. And R Studio is the catalyst to be able to do a lot of those different things. So let's go back down to this right hand pane. There's the files, this is your project directory. These are the plots. So whenever you create a bar plot or a box plot, just as an example, it'll pop up right here and you can immediately immediately see the results of your data in a graphical format. Now these are the packages. This is what gives R Studio. Um, to me a lot of value because I can look at all the packages that I have and the ones that are checked are ones that I'm currently able to access in this project. So if I wanted to use multiple packages, more packages than the defaults, I would just have to click this and as you see at the bottom left, it loaded it into the project and now we can do a sentiment analysis. So it's pretty impressive, pretty helpful for me. And if there is not a package down here that is a that you know exists, but it's not listed here, you have to go to install and it'll give you an option as you see this drop in. It'll give you options of what you're looking for and try to find it. And it'll, t it'll ask you where you want to install it um, in the repository. And we can go over some of that later, but it's just helpful to know that if you don't see a package here that you want to get, you can search it here and it'll pull it off from an online repository. Now this, this is a super helpful uh, panel as well. If we go down here, if you type question mark and you type in some type of function that you're curious about, it'll pull up the documentation for it right in the IDE. And to me, that's really powerful because that keeps me going quicker and I, I know more um, of what I need to do. So if you're not sure what the exact name of it is, uh, you can go down here and you can do a double question mark, which will give you a, a list of possible, document, possible documents that you can look at that relate to what you're looking for. Finally, this viewer isn't used too much, so we won't go over that right now. Now, if we look at the top right, environment is where we will save uh, different variables throughout our, our process of doing data analysis. So if we, if we create a new variable down here in the console and we say it's number, you'll see that now we have this in memory. Number is the name of the va variable and three is the value of that variable. 
So it's important to keep this in mind because if, if there's too many things in, in the environment, we want to get rid of something, it's pretty easy. You just RM, meaning remove, and put that variable in there, and it'll remove it from the environment. Now most of the time, I just keep them in there because I'll want to reference them later. Um, but you'll see as we start working with scripts in later videos of how useful this can be. Now if you see here, this is the history of everything we've called, everything the console at the bottom left has called. And so it's, it's great to see the process of, of what's been called in what order. And finally, git integration. Uh, this is another game changer for me that, that is incredible. And I'll, I'll create another video about how to implement this and how to get this working because you may not be seeing git in your tabs right now. But don't worry, I'll help you get that set up. So that's a brief introduction to um, our studio and just a couple other helpful tips that you can go up here to uh, the project at the top right and you can kind of cycle through the projects that you are working on. And so as you can see, I have a lot of different things that I'm working on, not too many, but um, it's, it's easy to switch back and forth with that little tab right there. And I know that some people prefer to have certain types of looks and feels to the text and uh, the color of the text and everything. And I'll go through that in a, in a later video as well to show you how to change the appearance, appearance and the colors of the IDE. So let's go ahead and look at the CRAN. Uh, you may have seen the CRAN when we said install and it says install from repository CRAN. Now what is the CRAN? Let's go ahead and look it up on Google. Comprehensive R Archive Network. And if we go ahead and click on that, this is the repository of where all of those packages that you see or that you saw in our studio exist. And so you can come here and you can look through the contributed packages and you can look through to see what kind of ones would be best for you to use. And you can, you can kind of explore this and, and see where those packages exist. Um, so it's a pretty useful website. So that, that'll conclude our first video. Hopefully that will get you up and running so you are ready to use R and R Studio effectively. Uh, thank you.